Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nur, Chuck, and this is, yeah it is, it's The Thunder Show, AKA the 74th most interesting wine-related website on the internets. And today we are talking about pizza wine. Lots of peeps want to know what wine they should drink with pizza. It's a question that I'm bombarded with. And because I'm trying to lower my email inbox count, I'm going to do an episode on some of the wines that I think are most interesting with pizza. And I'm going to throw you a left-handed slurve because all of these, all of these are white wines. And I know when you think about pizza, you think about Chianti and the romance and the river and all that. We're flipping the switch. We're going white on you today. We've got four wonderful white wines, one from Spain, hometown USA, and two from Italy. Um, before I go anywhere, a couple things I want to address. Number one, because I need to drive through Yonkers to get to my in-laws. Big, 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 big shout out to Chris the Cop from Yonkers. I really apologize for not making it on Monday, but I know I'm gonna see you at the Super Tasting in a couple of days, just 10 days away or two weeks away, not less than two weeks away from our Super Tasting, Eric excited about that um, and I promise we'll spend some quality time together but a big shout out to Chris the Cop and yesterday while I was doing the show of course because I blank out blackout actually when the red light goes on I see a red light you're my friend aren't you? I love you um, I, I said that the uh, Pinot Tage was a clone of uh, you know Sinso and Pinot Noir and what I did mean was a crossing a lot of people emailed me I appreciate it. I apologize. That was a, a, a big mistake. I don't want people running around the world, you know, saying clone instead of crossing. So we did that. Great job by the Vaniacs paying attention to yesterday where it said palette the different way. Very impressed with how many people emailed me. Realized I'm not doing that again because I am trying to lower the count of the emails. Let's get into wine because I can blabber all day. And then people come in and I see them post over the internet saying, I can't watch that show. The first five seconds suck. So, Costello, D. Medina, 2006. You notice I'm left handing this? 2006, Verdejo. And I'm very excited about this because I want to talk about Verdejo. Uh, 11 US dollars. This is a Spanish wine. I'm going to taste it first and then we're going to bring out the pizza. We've got a whole little thing, so cool little idea I think today. But uh, Verdejo is very important. It's got a resurgence. I mean, it was really like in deep sleep for like a hundred years. It's like if Walt Disney now popped up. I mean, that's what has happened about eight or nine years ago in the wine industry with Verdejo. Uh, it's, It's a very particularly strong and intense and flavorful white grape. It's one of the now most important white wines in Spain. It's found from Verdejo, which is uh, in the northwest of Spain, a, a very important place producing very interesting wines. It was a grape that a lot of people jumped off for, I'm telling you, ever, you know, decades and decades, because it was a wine that would oxidize very easily. But new technologies like cold fermentation and nighttime harvesting have really resurged this grape. And this is what's so awesome about the wine industry. Why I always, always, always tell you that you have to try new things, different things. There's so much going on. There's so many flavors and tastes to be explored. And you're sitting at home drinking Pinot Grigio and Chardonnay until your face falls off. So come with me, explore, and let's get into Verdejo, which is a really, really interesting and complex and affordable because it was dormant for 100 years. White wine, 11 US dollars. Let's give it a little bit of a smell. Smell, action, sensation, statement, sass. I like that one. And it's just so vibrant. I mean, this is just a, such a lemon zest explosion of a nose. It's got a really nice barley aspect as well, which I'm appreciating. There's also a little hint of like sanitizer, like, like you know, like the stuff that my wife gives me. What is that? Perel. Eric. Perel. So I get a little Perel, barley, and lemon smell on this wine. Let's give it a little bit of a what was I gonna do there? People are gonna get addicted to this grape, and I'm gonna feel good. This uh, Medina is bringing the thunder. This is a really good wine. Very, very acidic. So many times I've gone to my rants about grape varietals here, and we taste the wine and it stinks, and I'm like. This is finally time where the wine's stepping up. The acidity in this wine is just spectacular. Vibrant, fresh, um, 
beautiful mouthfeel, nice long finish. Again, this is lemon lime, almost like Mr. Clean. It's got, it's it just, you know, it's lemon lime, but then it feels like it's really cleaning your floor as well. This time it's cleaning your palate, palate. And I'm really excited about it. A very fresh version of, of, of Verdeo, uh, a, a wine that is really appealing to me right now. It's very clean. It's good. Pizza. We should have had a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle here. That would have been rad. Anyway, pizza's good. I like pizza. I actually eat pizza like this. I don't eat it with the cheese. So let me throw off this whole process. I'm gonna have to actually bring a piece with the cheese. But without the cheese, how I like it. I better eat it with the cheese because then everybody's gonna say, that wasn't a scientific experiment. It's not anyway. What I've liked in the past when I've done this combo just happened again for people that are a little bit sensitive to high acidic wines. It makes my teeth tingle. You know, for people like that, this is the kind of combo that really goes well because the acidity really tones down, you're just fleshed out, and you're left with the fruit. And you can even see the pineapple subtle flavor that I didn't even mention, because I wasn't even seeing it that much, accent a little bit with this food combo. Guys, wine changes. Wine changes in glassware. Wine changes by the way you decant it or how long it's open. Wine changes by the way it's aged. And wine definitely changes while it's in your mouth with food. Wine is flexible. It's a chameleon. Get used to it. No top five rules of this, that, and the other thing. Wine is gonna move on you. Here is a perfect example of a wine that was crisp, attacking, vibrant, and fresh and zingy that became much more muted, chill, but still very beautiful. A very good wine with this pairing. I think a white wine with pizza is obviously a way to go since I got four of them for you today. And I think Verdejo is, is a grape that you need to step up and understand. It starts with a V, Verdejo, Vaynerchuk, you know partial to it. It's a good wine. Very nice wine. I'm going to score this wine 89 plus. If it had a little more oomph, we could have given it, you know, a little more. We could have given it the 90. But what does that mean anyway? Let's move on. Hana. 2006 Slusser Road Vineyard, Russian River Valley, Sauvignon Blanc. 11 US dollars. 93 points. Wine and spirits. A huge rating for a wine that's 11 bones. I'm downright excited to see where this wine's gonna go. It's downright excited, because as you can see, it's spritzing for you. It's spritzing, baby, it's spritzing. It's spritzing a lot, actually, I like that. Very vibrant, very young, bubbly. Let's see what it's got going on. A little bit of a smell action sensation. I get peaches. And I like peaches, not as much as most people, but I'll take peaches. I've got a Moscato kind of-esque, you know, like a Muscat kind of uh, flavoring on the nose. It's got a very vibrant, fresh fruit, kind of like peaches in Prosecco, is what it kind of smells like. Um, Prosecco being a wine from Italy, sparkling. It's also got an underlining balloon smell. You know, like the inside of a balloon. Um, come on, you've put it over your nose. Oh, the rubber glove? No, it's not like that. It's, but I see where you're going. It's not that serious, but there's a subtle little balloon action going on here. So we're going peaches, Prosecco. Maybe if we put the peaches in the Prosecco in a balloon and then blew it up and then became a bot. That'd be hilarious. Uh, that's kind of where it's going. 11 bucks, Russian River, very great place, the Burgundy of Sonoma. So, you know, it's just a, it's a really, uh, really interesting little place. Let's, uh, let's give it a whirl. with some pizza. Pizza. Thank you. So 
sometimes you really, really, really have to wonder where scores come from. 93! I mean, this is a little bit of a surprising effort. The wine is pretty off balanced, and I'm a big fan of Hana wines. They actually make some really good wines. Some of their benchmark wines, Zinfandels. I'm a big, big fan in general of their, their wines. Um, I know everybody's gonna come out and say, Gary, you hate California Sauvignon Blanc. Listen, I don't. I just said there's other places I think make better Sauvignon Blanc. It's not me hating, don't forget, it's $11. 11, Kellen Clemens' number, the quarterback I want the Jets to use. I mean, this is a wine that I just think lacks any personality. I mean, you just know those people, right? You're like, you, actually you don't know because you're like, who was that? I mean, that's what this wine kind of does. It's very flabby. The acidity is off balance. The fruit can't come through the acidity. Uh, the finish is extremely short. Even when the food came in and kind of toned down the acidity and I was hoping for it to show some body, it was doing very much of nothing. Um, it's, it's, to me, it's, it's, a, it's a blank stare wine. Like, you gonna say something wine? Mm-mm. And that's what happened here. I'm gonna score this wine 83 points. Let's go 10 points high, lower than Wine and Spirits. I, I, again, as you know if you've watched the show, I'm a fan of Wine and Spirits magazine. I think they do a really good job. Why I was so pumped to try this wine. But this is clearly an example of a wine that is not so good. All right, let's move on. Vesalo, 2005 Greco di Tufa, 15 US dollars. And you wanna go traditional this is exactly uh, the wine that I get excited about. This is an Italian wine, um, and the Greco grape was brought to us from Greece. Big shout out to Janic. And uh, for 15 bones, 2005 vintage, um, great color, um, traditional. You know, we're going, we're going to Italy, we're having pizza. I mean, and look at the color. I don't know if you could tell, but it's so much darker, so different. Let's get a little bit of smell. And there it is, I mean this is, this reminds me of, a, it has a cantaloupe component. I mean just a beautiful cantaloupe component. And I mean like the inner cantaloupe, you know when you get like the guts out of it or whatever, the seeds and everything kind of, that's where you can really get the uh, bouquet. This is how you build your nose, you gotta do those kind of things, it's fun. Toilet bowl, don't be scared. Um, little, little hint of olive oil on the nose as well, which is quite interesting. So cantaloupe dipped in olive oil. Very pretty, I mean just, you know, um, what is this, it almost has a, there's almost a rice pudding aspect on this nose as well. It's really quite aromatically interesting. AI baby, let's give it a whirl. I don't even want the pizza. Beautiful, downright sour apple flavors coming through. Again, the cantaloupe singing and ringing all over your palate. Great body weight. It's a heavy wine on my palate, which I really appreciate because it makes me feel like I'm drinking something. It's got some weight. Sometimes you need a little love handles, you know what I'm saying? That's what this wine's bringing to the table. Great structure, great complexity, um, very long finish, still tasting the wine. That oiliness, that kind of smell of olive oil is kind of interesting because it's got an oily kind of component to it. It's so rich, so palate covering. Make sure you swirl it in your entire mouth. You're getting a lot of flavors that way. Pizza time. Of the three wines, this is the wine that's least changing with the food. This wine kind of said food, bring it. I've still got the guts to kind of show myself. Which is good or bad, it really depends. I mean, I like when wives evolve, like the Bordeaux, it was really interesting. I also like when wines can stand up and do its thing. Um, it's a very good Greco de Tufo, $15. I'm gonna lean towards 90 points in this wine. I like it, um, I like it a lot, believe it or not, Interestingly enough, I'd rather see people try the Verdejo. Um, if I had to compare the two, one, it's $4 less a bottle, and 
I think that makes it a better buy. Um, but this is a really exceptional wine. And if you know you like heavier wines, you're gonna lean towards this. Less acidic. If you're a big Sauvignon Blanc, zingy, zangy, zing, zang, zang fan from New Zealand, you'll probably like the Verde Hill. If you're more of a Chardonnay fan, though it's not oaky and buttery, it's got the weight issues that a Greco de Tufo brings to the table. Um, and so uh, I'm feeling that wine. It's a good wine. And because I like Greco so much, we've got to do it twice because it's so nice. And this is Amina 2000 and something. Can I get a year here? Was it on the capsule up here? 2004. There we go. 2004 Greco di Tufa. Now Greco di Tufa, you know, it's it's a DOCG which it's recognized, certified 16 US dollars, 89 points Robert Parker, 12 and a half percent alcohol content. Again, a lot of people got used to Greco di Tufa by drinking the really thin, long, dark bottle, the Taruzzi, which a lot of people were on for a long, long time. It's like the only Greco di Tufa that 99% of the stores carried, and even to this day, a lot of people only carry it. Right off the bat, I'm a little concerned for this wine because it is $16 wearing the number of Trader Jerkoff Vinny Testaverde. Let me just say that. I mean, who knows what's going to happen, but let's see. Really nice, tremendously interesting golden color again, and so you're seeing the color component from Greco is very interesting. Uh, let's give it a little bit of a sniff. And this is even more intense than the last wine. Now it's a little bit older. Now this is getting a, a little bit of a, this also has that rubber action. Kind of, this is kind of interesting. This is almost more towards the, the rubber. It's got the balloon kind of component. like a helium, like a gas. Maybe that's where I'm going with the balloon thing. It's got that kind of feel. I actually feel if I keep sniffing this wine, I'm going to go to sleep. I just really do. It's quite interesting. It's got that kind of component going on. I still get a subtle mango, but I gotta be honest, man, just as I've left there, I mean, I really feel a little lightheaded, Eric. <laughs> you know? Wild. Yeah, it's not like the marker thing. It's really like the gas. I mean, because I had to get a root canal when I was 11, and they put the gas on, and I was, good night, Susan. <laughs> Who's Susan? Anyway. All right, here we go. Let's give this a little bit of a whirl. We're, we're going away. From, I'm, I think I'm getting loopy from the gas that this wine has. Let's give this a whirl. Again, Greco de Tufo, I'm just telling you, if you've never had one, I'm feeling it. Red wine drinkers white, as I like to call it. So much body, so much complexity, a lot of dancing flavors going on here. Again, I get a little, a bit of a, little light buttered action here, um, but not really, that's not fair. That's, what am I looking for here? You know what, this kind of gives me a little bit of a star fruit component, which is quite interesting and nice. Very crisp, very clean. I mean, this is sensational. I mean, I kind of almost forgot. I haven't drank Greco in a little while. Pizza, you know, let's do the pizza. Damn it, sorry. Again, a wine that I think really does well with pizza but holds its own. Across the board, I've been pretty happy with the way the wines have changed and evolved with the food. First wine completely changed Lost in the City. The Hana was crap all along, so whatever. But the last two wines have been really strong, but you definitely do feel like, for example, on the Amina here, with the pizza, there was a, there's a lot more, and I still even taste it, green apple flavors. So again, Food is gonna change your palate. It's gonna put a different flavor and component into your mouthfeel, and you're gonna get a lot of different um, flavors. As a matter of fact, what we'll probably do next week is we'll do a little shopping, and we'll taste the same wine with four or five different food components and see how it evolves. Next week. Yeah, next week. I'm pre-taping. I'm going to London next week. So is Eric. Tech. We're tech. FOA, baby. Um, see, don't be scared. I don't keep the fans hanging. Um, Good wine. Uh, I'm gonna go with this wine. I'm gonna stick to 89 points. I kind of just didn't have the fun factor that Vesuvo had, um, but still very well made. A uh, little thinner on the finish. I was also a little concerned with the integration from the front to the end, that mid palate range. I thought it dipped a little bit. Didn't put it completely together. It's a little bit more of a puzzle wine. All good pieces, but just not complete and put together. It's like a transformer that's broken. You put it back together, it's rad. But this one's broken. It's got some pieces laying around. But it's still transformer, that's why it gets 89 points. You see what I mean? Um, <clears throat> Question of the day. What is your favorite 
type of pizza. How do you eat your pizza? Topping, style, you know, I like to go this route, no cheese, but what I really like, see I didn't even, I'm saving it for myself later. Mushrooms and peppers, I'm telling you, it's where it's at. But it's weird, I kind of eat those and then I skin off the cheese. It's so weird, I'm such a big cheese fan. Because you, with a little bit of me, we might just be changing the wine world. See, I'm taking up a step back, I'm questioning myself. See ya.